So we're going to do another comparison between two different groups, only this time instead of being given the summary statistics, uh, we're going to be given a list of data. And so this is the saturated fat content from uh, two different national pizza chains, Brand D and Brand PJ. Those are, of course, not affiliated in any way with any kind of actual brand of pizza, naturally. And what I want to know is, is there a big difference uh, between the saturated fat contents? Now, of course, I'm not going to give up my pizza, but I do want to make sure when I eat my pizza that I'm doing it in the healthiest way possible. You'll notice that the two uh, samples are different sizes. That's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can write our hypotheses. Now, the question is, are they different? We have different mean saturated fat contents, and our null hypothesis, uh, as usual, is no, of course you don't. There is no difference between the two. So the average of brand D minus the average of brand PJ, I suspect, is going to be zero. That's my null hypothesis. There is no difference between the two. The alternative then will be uh, there is a difference between brand D and brand PJ, meaning whenever I subtract them, there uh, is not a difference of zero. One of them is bigger than the other. Okay? So uh, at this point, I need to go ahead and check my conditions, and uh, we get a little tricky here with the conditions because I didn't tell you anything in this problem about how I collected this data. Um, so uh, we're going to assume uh, that the samples were chosen independently. in my quest uh, tireless quest to make sure that you have the highest quality uh, statistics education I went uh, across the state uh, sampling pizzas from multiple uh, pizza restaurants it's a tough job but I was willing to do it for you so uh, what about randomization um, I didn't tell you if I chose them at random uh, if I just went in and like threw darts at the menu to uh, randomly pick what it was that I wanted to eat um, so what we have to do is uh, assume that these pizzas or the these samples of pizzas are uh, representative of all pizzas now what you're assuming here really is that I am a good statistician and that I did not go to uh, one store and get uh, double meat, double cheese, double bacon pizzas and at the other one get vegetarian pizzas with fat-free crust and extra cheese, or no cheese, fat-free cheese. Uh, so um, what you have to assume is that I was fair when I ordered these pizzas. Like if I ordered uh, pepperoni from one place, I ordered the, a similar dish from the other place to make sure we have a fair comparison between the two. You also have to assume that uh, I didn't order larges at one restaurant and smalls at the other. Okay, So when we assume they're representative, we're assuming that I was a good statistician when I did it. Now, uh, we have to answer the question on whether or not this data is nearly normal, and I wasn't told that the data is unimodal and symmetric, so I have to check that. So. Uh, the way I'm going to do that is do a quick sketch on the calculator. So on the calculator, I'm going to go ahead and go down to my spreadsheet and uh, put that in. Uh, let's call this first one uh, brand D. Branded. And uh, over here, let's call this one brand PJ. I could probably get away with just abbreviating them D and PJ, but let's go ahead and type the whole thing in there. So what I'm going to do is take this uh, list of data that I have here and real quick just type in this uh, list of data. I'm going to put um, brand D and brand PJ in there. Now in a minute, I'm going to do a quick graph of this data, and what I have to make sure of when I do a quick graph of this data is that I do two of them. I'm going to do two quick graphs. Remember, whenever you check the conditions, I have to make sure both of my samples meet the conditions. This is uh, something new if all you've been doing is one proportion or one sample uh, z-tests and t-tests. You have only ever checked the conditions for one sample because you only ever had one sample. But here I've got two uh, random samples that I chose, and I have to make sure that both of these random samples that I chose, or I'm saying random, we don't know that they're random, both of these representative samples that I chose um, meet the conditions. If one of these samples doesn't meet the conditions, uh, my results are a little less reliable than I would like. So what I've done here is I've put in brand D and brand PJ, and so uh, I'm going to go ahead and do brand D first. So on the inspires, 
you can just go select the quick graph option and you can see uh, there's uh, the dot plot. I sort of prefer histograms myself, but dot plots are okay. And you can see that this is not uh, perfectly normal, but it doesn't have to be perfectly normal. It has to be nearly normal. So you can see it does look like it's unimodal and reasonably symmetric. Uh, this bar right here is a little unusual, but I think if I didn't have that bar, be really close to normal. So uh, I'm going to do a real quick sketch here for brand D. Your sketches don't have to be perfect by any means. Just enough to show that you really did check the conditions. I'm going to do an extremely hasty sketch here so that you don't have to spend all day watching me make this beautiful drawing. And then I need to do the exact same thing with a brand PJ. Now on the Inspires is really easy. You can just come down here and highlight brand D and change it to brand PJ and it will adjust it. Now this looks a little less uh, normal than the previous one, but I'd say it looks normal enough. So it's brand PJ normal enough. Now uh, you may think, golly, he's being awfully uh, OCD about checking all these conditions. And I am because uh, your AP exam will be anal about you checking the conditions. Now if you squint really hard, I think you could probably convince yourself that brand PJ is also approximately, roughly, extremely roughly, <laughs> unimodal and symmetric. I've mentioned this before, um, the AP test will not give you uh, problems where you can't meet the conditions uh, because your results would be uh, unreliable if you couldn't meet the conditions. But you still have to check. I'd say roughly, very roughly, <laughs> unimodal and symmetric. Okay, so uh, I've got my two drawings done, and I've specified that both of them are roughly unimodal and symmetric. Last thing I have to do is specify what kind of test I'm going to do. So uh, I will perform a two-sample t-test because I have two different groups that I'm looking at, a two-sample t-test. So uh, let's go ahead and write down the mechanics here. I'm going to need... Uh, the number of things in group D and uh, the num uh, number of things in group PJ. I'm going to do the average of my sample in group D and the average of my sample in group PJ. And then I'm going to need the standard deviation of group D and the standard deviation of PJ. Now, if you're a real go-getter, you can just take these lists and, and figure it out yourself. But uh, why in the world would you do that? Uh, because you've already gone through the trouble of putting the data into the calculator. Why not just make the calculator do it for you? Um, so I need to go back over to my um, tables. and I'm going to go to statistics, stat tests, and I'm doing a two-sample t-test. And this time I'm going to use data because I already have the data put in there. And so my first list is brand D and my second list is brand PJ. Frequency I'm going to leave alone. My alternative hypothesis was that they are not equal, so I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave pooled as no. And uh, I don't want to put the first result in column B because that's where my um, second list is. I'm going to change that to column C. And let's go up here. Let's go ahead and close this window so we can get a little better view here. Okay, so here's my two sample t-test. There's my alternative hypothesis. There's my t-value, my p-value, my degrees of freedom. Let's go down and find the things I was looking for. Okay, there's the average of my first two groups. The average of group one was 11.25. And according to the calculator, the average of group two was 6.533. Uh, I'm reading this off the calculator. Group one was 3.1933 for the standard deviation, and group two was 2.5875. And finally, group D had 20 things in it, and group PJ had 15 things in it. This is all information that the calculator gives me. Okay, so there's my uh, summary. 
let's go ahead, even though the calculator already told me what the answer is, let's go ahead and write out our t-test that we're going to do. So t equals, um, on the top is what did happen, what the actual difference uh, in between the two of them was. So uh, according to the calculator, group 1 was 11.25, and group 2, I'm just going to round, was 6.53. That's what the difference was minus uh, what my null hypothesis said the difference would be, which is zero. I expected there to be no difference over the standard deviation, which is going to be uh, the variances. I'm going to have to add the variances. So the variance of the first one, 3.193 squared over um, the square root of 20 squared, which of course is just going to be 20, plus... Um, so uh, 2.588 was the standard deviation of group 2 squared over uh, the square root of 15, which is how many things were in that sample, squared, which is just going to be 15. This looks pretty ugly, but I don't really have to do this. The calculator already did it for me and told me what the t-value was. Um, according to the calculator, the t-value is 4.82344. Uh, I only need two decimals there because that's all the chart would show you is two decimals. Um, I don't even really need to go look at the chart though because if I went and looked at the chart it would be just to find the p-value uh, and the calculator told me that as well. The p-value is 0 .00003 so that's four zeros and a three, and then the last thing I need, because I'm gonna do a confidence interval in a minute, I need to know the degrees of freedom, which is 32.7573. Uh, you could round that to uh, 33 if you wanted to. I'm gonna be a little more specific this time and uh, do uh, 32.757. I'll probably end up rounding that to uh, 32.8, I guess. So about 32.8 degrees of freedom. So we're going to need that for a confidence interval here in a minute. But before we do the confidence interval, let's talk about what the p-value means. Uh, the p-value is very, very low. So since the p-value is low, I reject the null hypothesis. My alternative was just that they're different. So uh, whenever I say what I think, I'm saying I have strong evidence uh, that they're different. And I'm going to be specific about what it is. The mean saturated fat content is different between brand D and brand PJ. We'll say brand D is uh, Pizza Hut and brand PJ is Mr. Gaddy's. Probably that's what they stand for. So uh, I'm saying that I think there is a difference. I believe that there is a difference between the two. So now let's figure out how big that difference actually is. And in order to figure out how big that difference actually is, I'm going to do a confidence interval. So the confidence interval is going to be uh, whatever the difference is, I still haven't figured out what the difference is, but I'll have to in just a minute, whatever that difference in their averages turns out to be, plus or minus the margin of error, which is the critical value for, uh, and it's okay if you round this to 33, but I'm going to be specific and do 32.8 degrees of freedom. I'm going to be specific, um, not because I'm uh, anal about having it exactly right, but because the calculator is going to do it for me. I don't have to actually go look up this number. The calculator is going to do all that for me, so why not be specific? Uh, times the standard error, which we just figured out a few minutes ago. It's the uh, variance of group one. I'm going to write this a little differently than I did the first time, just so you can see that these are the same. There's the variance of group one plus... Uh, the variance of group 2, which is 2.588 over root 15 squared. This is exactly the same as what I did up here for the hypothesis test, just written in a little bit different way. If this makes it clearer for you, this was the standard deviation squared plus the standard deviation squared, which gives me the variances. I add the variances and square root them. Okay, so once I get that done, I'm not doing any more work. I'm going to make the calculator do it, especially since I still have, oops, since I still have the data 
put into the calculator here, brand D and brand PJ, I'm going to go menu, statistics, and this time I want to do a confidence interval to find out what I think the difference is. This is a two sample T interval. Uh, I'm going to use data because I already have that put in. List one was brand D. List two was brand PJ. The frequency is uh, going to be one. I'm only using each list one time. 95% uh, seems good. Let's put our result in column E since we're using the first four columns. Okay, and so right over here you can see the calculator gives me the lower and the upper. The lower is 2.72663, the upper is 6.70671. I'm going to go ahead and round that to two decimals. Um, 2.73 and 6.71 is the interval. So I am 95% confident that... Um, the mean saturated fat content, sat fat, of brandy is between 2.73 and 6.71 grams higher than the mean sat fat of brand PJ. So it seems as though brand D is higher. I can't say with 100% certainty that it is. I am 95% confident that the difference is somewhere in between here. That means there's a 5% chance I'm wrong. I would have to be wrong by a lot. I would have to be wrong by more than 2.73 grams for brand PJ to actually be higher, but it is possible that I'm wrong, so I don't want to go too far and say there is evidence that, uh, or I guess it's okay to say there's evidence, but I want to say this is proof that brand D is higher than brand PJ. I don't have proof that one's higher than the other. Just a really strong suspicion. So whenever I go on my next pizza bender, I will be uh, buying all my pizza from uh, brand PJ so that I can uh, eat uh, pizza uh, in a healthy kind of way. So brand PJ, which as I said is probably Mr. Gaddy's, is uh, where we're going to eat our pizza from now on if we want to have the greatest chance of eating less fat.